In this episode of the Dads Making a Difference podcast, we are exploring the pivotal role of fathers in shaping future leaders within their families. Today, we will delve into how dads can build leadership capacity at home. Let me start with a story. When I was a kid, my father always had this unique way of turning everyday situations into lessons in leadership. And today, we're going to do the same for you through the lens of a father named John. This episode about building leadership capacity in your kids on the Dads Making a Difference podcast starts right now. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to another episode of the Dads Making a Difference podcast. My name is Cam Hall. I am your host, and we are diving into another pillar in the fatherhood 360 framework, the framework we use within dads making a difference as our filter, meaning every conversation we have, every episode we release, everything we do is centered on these six pillars in our framework. Now, of course, these pillars are designed to help you grow grow physically, emotionally, spiritually, intellectually, relationally, financially. We want you to grow in all those areas. But our six pillars within the DMD are a little bit different because yes, those are great things. Those six things I just said are great things, but they're so general. And I wanted to be more specific on how we were going to help you get to where you want to be as a dad, as a husband, as a professional entrepreneur, you name it. And so the six pillars, we've been going over the last five weeks. I did a quick intro uh, six weeks ago on the six pillars. And then we dived into each one of the pillars over the last five weeks. Now we're finishing off this mini series today with pillar number six. Now, if you've been listening, you know that these don't necessarily have to take place in order. I chose an order because we started with a commitment to physical and mental health, because I truly believe that without your health, you have nothing, nothing. So take care of your health. We then went around the circle of the Fatherhood 360 framework, and we talked about fostering strong and healthy relationships. We talked about commitment to growth, personal growth, professional growth, growth in your family. We talked about responding appropriately to your family, to context, to culture. We talked about organization and balance last week. And this week, we are finishing off our series with building capacity in others. And in the DMD, this is how we describe that. A dad builds leadership capacity within his kids, in his wife and partner, and within those around him. Leaders don't just tell people what to do. The best leaders build leaders. And as a dad, I want my kids to become leaders. I want my wife to be a leader in her workplace, in her interactions. So how am I as a father building that capacity in them? And that's what we're going to dive into today. So I'm glad that you're here. I appreciate you. We're rocking along. But I want to start with first defining leadership capacity. What is leadership capacity? So I'm going to give you an example. Leadership capacity in a family setting is more than just being in charge. It's about nurturing qualities like resilience, empathy, and decision-making. So think of it as planting a garden. It's not just about sowing the seeds, but also about providing the right environment for them to grow. The whole framework allows you to start planting seeds. But how are you going to help those seeds grow? How do you nurture your kids? How do you nurture your family? How are you showing up every day, watering them, giving them knowledge, challenging them with great questions, surrounding them with a loving relationship so that they can grow? You know, I want to talk about uh, one of the guys in our community. His name is John. He's a father of two Every evening, he spends time discussing with his kids what he did that day, what they did that day, focusing not just on what they achieved, but also how they approached their challenges. We've talked about this before. We had a couple of guests on uh, a while ago who talked about the importance of your daily conversations with your kids and not just to ask yes and no questions, but to ask open-ended questions that force your kids to think. 
and respond and not to just ask them about the great things that happen, the best thing about your day. It's all good to know that, but to ask them about their challenges. And John does that. This routine has helped his children and will help your children develop a mindset of reflection and self-improvement. Reflection and self-improvement. When we think about building leadership capacity, we're talking about resilience, empathy, and decision-making. Well, if you are building a mindset in your kids and in your family of a mindset of self-reflection and self-improvement, you are doing those things. Your kids are going to become more resilient. Your family as a whole is going to become more resilient. You're going to face challenges. You are. My kids are 11 and 9 and Kim and I, early 40s. And, you know, over the next 50 years, we are going to face challenges. Now, we can set the tone right now on how those challenges are going to be faced. We're building capacity. Man, I'm building capacity in myself. I'm not going to lie. I don't have this all figured out. Don't listen to this thinking, oh, Cam, this expert telling me to do this. No, I work on this stuff every single day. There's days I wake up, I'm like, man, I suck at this. But you know what? I'm putting in the work. I'm doing the meaningful work for my kids. I'm doing the meaningful work for my wife. And when I'm not, I would hope that they call me on it. I would hope that my friends and my community and my, my close circle would call me on it because I want to build capacity in them to be better. I had a conversation with a future guest. We were on a discovery call not too long ago yesterday, actually. And we were talking about wanting to be better than our fathers. Not because we don't love our dads. I love my dad. I've talked about that lots on this podcast. Not to be better because he didn't do a good job. Just, I want to be better. Life has changed. Our environment has changed. Our communities. My kids' lifestyle is so different than my lifestyle growing up. They're faced with different challenges. They're faced with different celebrations. They have a different community, a different culture they're growing up in. Let's not even get into tech. I want to be different. And truthfully, I want to build capacity in my family and in my kids so that my kids are better than me. I already want that. I hope I'm doing a fantastic job, but I want my kids to be better than me. Hey guys, I wanted to take a moment and talk about our community of DMD brothers in the DMD mastermind. We are men who help each other to stay focused and intentional in our pursuits of personal, professional, physical, financial, emotional, and spiritual growth. We are a community of men who bring courage, wisdom, and transparency to unfiltered conversations that challenge us to be more impactful men. To be dads making a difference. We do this through our online and in-person events where men come together to speak into each other's lives and then turn around and do the deep work to create change in their families, in their businesses, and in the community around them. If you are wondering if this community might be right for you, you can find more information on the DMD Mastermind, and you can also book a call directly with me at dmdmastermind.com. Now, let's get back to our show. So as we're building leadership capacity, we're talking about building things, qualities, remember resilience, empathy, decision-making, those types of things. We need to take some things into consideration. We need to consider on how we interact and impact the different members in our family. So in our family, we have four family members. I have a pretty good understanding on how I impact myself. That's why I've reached out, surrounded myself with a community because I know on my own, I'm not very good at it. Now, I have to understand that my wife and my kids will respond differently to the things that I ask, the things that I do, how I show them, how I model. So we need to understand the impact on different family members. So for example, let's go back to John. So for his partner, John's supportive approach creates a shared leadership model at home. The same might be for you. A supportive approach creates a shared leadership model. They make decisions together and they ensure that everyone feels valued and heard. So they work together, him and his wife, 
to make sure that their kids feel valued and heard. That's important. How many times in your life have you not felt valued or heard? I can put my hand up. I'm no, I know you can. In those moments, how open are you to direction? How open are you to suggestion? How open are you to following someone for an example? Not very open. So John and his wife, they work through this supportive approach to create an opportunity for shared leadership. They make decisions together. They make their kids feel valued and heard. And his children learn from this dynamic. And they understand the importance of collaboration and respect in leadership, building capacity. So we've talked about so many things. I want you to keep these things straight. And you can jot them down, come back to it. So far, we've talked about what? We've talked about resilience. We've talked about empathy. We've talked about decision-making. I also talked about the mindset of reflection and self-improvement. Understanding the impact on different family members helps your kids understand the importance of collaboration and respect. These are the leadership qualities that we want to start to see being built in our kids. That's what we want. So as you're building in your family, this idea of self-leadership for you, in your family, building relationships, and self-relationships with your kids, it's important to understand that everything you do will have an impact on someone different in your family. Now, John was taking into consideration the impact on different family members. But there is also an importance in acknowledging the challenges and solutions that your family faces. So what are the challenges that your kids face on a day-to-day basis, your wife faces, you face, and then seek solutions? And here's how John would do that. So one challenge John faced was balancing guidance and independence. And I find the same thing. There's a lot of times where I will default into teacher mode. It's because it's what I know. It's what I've done for so long. And a lot of the times I'm teaching and I'm guiding and I'll want to answer and provide guidance to my kids so often that sometimes I don't give them space. I don't give them space for independence. I want you to take a little self-reflection right now. Do you give guidance and teaching more often than you give space for independence? We need to be able to balance both in a healthy way. So John found that setting clear expectations, but allowing his family members to find their own solutions, encouraged both responsibility and innovation. So add those to the list, responsibility and innovation, two more leadership capacities that we want to build in our kids. And of course, we want to be able to provide our kids with real life examples of leadership real life examples. So when I speak with Cam, um, whose father played a crucial role in her becoming a leader and an athlete, and she has a very close relationship with him, she would say that her dad always encouraged her to speak up and take on responsibility to become a leader. He encouraged her. I encourage Maya to do the same thing. I encourage my kids to step up and take on responsibility. Now, my 11-year-old does that much better than my 9-year-old, and I'm sure this will change over time. But here is the difference. Just like Kim's dad and just like me, I don't want to solve my kids' problems for them. Instead, I want to guide them. I want to be the guide in their story, not their hero. Now, hey, don't get me wrong. There's times where dad needs to step up and dad needs to be the hero, okay? And I'm okay with that. You step up, you be the hero. We need to do that sometimes. But when it comes to building leadership capacity in our kids, we need to take a step back and we need to let them build independence so that they can be the hero and we be the guide. So I want to reflect on just what we've like 
flown through in the last couple minutes. Okay. So first we wanted to define leadership capacity and what that looks like. So what does it look like to define leadership capacity? And we find that defining leadership capacity is not just about sowing seeds, but nurturing and helping those seeds grow in our kids. Because leadership capacity in our family helps them become stronger leaders, builds resiliency, builds empathy, and self-direction. So there's three things you can add to your list. Next is we want to know that we can help our kids develop a mindset of reflection and self-improvement. Okay. So reflection and self-improvement are two more leadership capacities that we can develop in our kids. And we can do that through discussing how kids approach their challenges day to day. We also want to take into consideration the impact we have on different family members. From this, our children are going to learn how to be dynamic and they will understand the importance of collaboration and respect in leadership. We're going to acknowledge challenges. We're going to face solutions by giving our kids both responsibility and the ability to innovate. We're going to let them find their own solutions. We're not always going to give the answers, but we are going to provide clear expectations. And then, of course, we want to give real life examples. So not solving problems for our kids, but allowing them space to struggle, to have challenges, and to grow so that they know that you're there to guide them, but they can be the hero in their story. We want them to be able to have confidence in stepping up to take on responsibility. So in wrapping up, remember that building leadership capacity is a journey, guys. It's a journey. We are all working through this. It's not just for the father, but for the entire family. And it's about creating an environment where every member can grow, contribute, and lead in their own unique way. So here's my challenge to you. What steps will you take this week to foster effective leadership and build capacity in your family. I want you to take a moment, reflect on this episode, go back, review the last six episodes, guys. These six pillars in the Fatherhood 360 framework are going to get you started off in the right direction when it comes to becoming a dad, making a difference. If you want more information on the F360 framework, go to dmdmastermind.com, click on the coaching tab, scroll down, you'll see the information there. If you are struggling, if you are seeking guidance and maybe just a little bit of direction, hey, set up a call with me. Go to www.callwithcam.com. Let's jump on a call. Let's get you pointed in the right direction. And let's look at which of these pillars in the framework you need to be focusing on right now. I appreciate you being here. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Dad's Making a Difference. We return next week back with another amazing interview from another amazing guest. We'll see you next week on the Dad's Making a Difference podcast. 